Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about activation energy in the Arrhenius equation. So activation energy is basically the energy needed to get a reaction to go. And you can see it diagram down here. You'll notice that in this case what we're doing is starting with the reactants A and B and going to the reactants C and D. So here we're thinking about this reaction. A plus B goes to C plus D. And you'll notice, first of all, that A plus B drops in energy as we go down to C and D, so that makes it an exothermic reaction. But before it can drop down, it's got to go up this hill. And that's true whether a reaction's exothermic or endothermic, it has to go up this hill before it can drop back down. And that hill, and the height of that hill, is called the activation energy. The higher that hill is, the harder it is to get that reaction to run forward. Now, this barrier, the height of it, is determined by something called the Arrhenius equation, and it's packaged into your rate laws. Even though we don't see activation energy in our rate laws, when we write rate, so let's say the rate law for this guy is this guy, rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A and B. Well, it turns out inside that rate constant, secretly, tucked away, is the activation energy. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at what determines that rate constant K. So here's the Arrhenius equation. This is one way to calculate your rate constant. And you'll see that on the left-hand side of the equation, we have our rate constant. So this guy's our rate constant. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have activation energy, right there. So our activation energy plays a role in determining our rate constant. And so what that means, basically, is if you have a really large activation energy, you get a smaller rate constant and a slower overall rate. Let's take a look at what all these other variables are. We also have A, which is called the frequency factor. What this is is basically a measure of how often the reaction tries to go forward. And then we have R, which is the gas constant. And really important here, that when you use this R, you have the units of joules per mole Kelvin. So it's going to be 8.3145. Lastly, we have temperature, which is in Kelvin, always. And this equation, when you take the frequency factor and multiply it by the exponential of these variables, gives you the rate constant. That frequency factor, like I said, is the number of times the reaction tries to go forward. So you can basically think about it like running up a hill, right? You might run as fast as you can up a hill, and if you have enough energy, you get over it, right? Well, if you try over and over and over and over again, you're going to have a better chance of getting up over that hill, up over that activation energy. And so the frequency factor is basically how often do these reactants try to go through the reaction. So when we think back to our graph... We can picture trying to run the reaction, or the frequency factor, as basically trying to run up this hill. And some fraction of your molecules will have enough energy that when they try to run over, they actually get over the top. So the bigger the frequency factor, the more often they're trying, that means the bigger the K and the faster the rate. So the Arrhenius equation is a really important equation. That's this guy, right, that we've been talking about the whole time. And it's important because it tells us what goes into our rate constant. And there are just a few key facts to remember about the Arrhenius equation. First, if you have a lower activation energy, that gives you a higher rate. This should make sense because your hill is smaller, and that means getting over it is easier. A higher temperature also means a higher rate. So you'll notice tucked away in our rate constant is not only our activation energy, but also temperature. And so rate constants are actually not constant at different temperatures. If you change the temperature, you change the rate constant. In general, the higher the temperature, the faster the rate. Now there's tons of math problems you can do with the Arrhenius equation, and we're going to take a look at two of those in future videos. So go ahead and check out my other videos on activation energy, which I'll link to below. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please uh, subscribe or leave any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching.